hospitals are among the nation's most complex, diverse, and energy-intensive buildings. Each year, hospitals in the United States spend at least $8.5 billion on energy, and the amount could easily be closer to $11 to $15 billion. And energy is a cost center that can be controlled. Add to these costs the tightening of regulations on carbon emissions and an imperative unique to hospitals to maintain energy reliability while providing round-the-clock critical care, even during extreme emergencies. These realities make the business case for energy efficiency uniquely compelling for hospitals. In 2003, Planners of the Dell Children's Medical Center of Central Texas, located in Austin, decided to create the world's first LEED Platinum Healthcare facility. We're currently located on land that's about 730 some acres here. It's the old Austin Municipal Airport. So this land had been here vacant for a number of years. It was a huge collaborative effort to be able to produce this building. Working with the city of Austin, working with Austin Energy, with their teams, building inspection, permitting. We're actually part of uh, the redevelopment of the old Austin airport. And so you had that whole team. As the president of the hospital, my major role was to uh, work hard to make sure that we delivered the project on time, that we met our objectives, and we brought it in on or under budget. We had set a goal of lead platinum. It's a very uh, attainable goal. It's uh, certainly platinum is the most lofty goal that the U.S. Green Building Council has. But lead platinum is just one goal for the project. You may want to set other goals as well, such as achieving a certain level of energy efficiency. We had dozens of ideas out on the table that ended up not making the cut. We used to have monthly meetings uh, that lasted an entire afternoon, and in those meetings we would bounce the ideas uh, off of each other. One version was we were going to have windmills on the roof of the hospital. But what we found out was if you can only have room for six or eight of them, the technology doesn't make sense. We looked at some solar energy items too. We looked at photovoltaics. And we were actually going to get uh, some rebate money for our photovoltaics. But what we found was we were able to garner more efficiencies in the energy plant that also created steam, that also created chilled water. So we kind of put our money in the energy plant rather than going the photovoltaic method. The planning team sought lead points for the central location of the facility, its placement on a brownfield site, indoor environmental quality, use of recycled and local building materials, water efficiency, and energy efficiency. It's not simply putting bells and whistles on mechanical units that are poorly organized and, and, and not well thought out in the building, uh, which is what a lot of people think. They're going to leave it to the engineers to make this building energy efficient, and it, it's simply not that. It's a, it's a totally integrated system of technology and just good old-fashioned design. Daylighting is one critical energy-efficient feature of the design. Daylighting is using the sun to offset electric lighting. And so there's a huge potential for energy savings there because you're using the glass to help provide some function in the building other than just views. You're actually using it for energy savings. We did computer models of what the ambient exterior light would look like from dawn to dusk, seven days a week, all four seasons of the year, and arranged the lighting system in the building to accommodate that so that we can save energy. My favorite thing about this facility is that you can't be farther than 30, 40 feet from uh, an open courtyard or light streaming in. The way the building is oriented around the courtyards really makes it possible to constantly feel like you have a connection with the outdoors. Courtyards were originally driven by the desire to get daylighting. But then we found we could superimpose them with our air intake, and that also gave us the chance to get air that wasn't superheated by being up on the roof. Uh, also, with our distributed mechanical systems, we needed a lot of places for air intake, so we were able to distribute those throughout all of the courtyard spaces. Those courtyards then became visual amenities because it's been proven that patients with views to nature heal faster. Other energy-saving features at Dell include high-efficiency lighting fixtures with occupancy sensors, exterior stairwells that don't require climate control, 
underfloor air distribution, and a reflective roof. To power the facility, the planning team chose an on-site cooling and heating plant, or CHP, instead of an off-site coal-fired plant. We generate all of our energy for this building and all of our chill water and all of our heating steam on-site in a cogen plant powered by underground natural gas. There's three things that we make here, electricity, steam, and chill water. Electricity is made off a natural gas-fired turbine. It's uh, directly coupled to a generator. It makes about four megawatts of electricity. The exhaust heat coming off of that gas turbine goes over to what's called a heat recovery steam generator. It takes that exhaust heat, 850 degrees, make steam up to about 120 pounds. We use the steam to make hot water and then distribute hot water throughout the hospital. The other use is sterilization. The instruments that they use for surgeries have to be cleaned and processed, so that we do that in-house and we use autoclaves to do it. In addition, we were taking the steam that would normally be going up a smokestack that drives the turbines. That goes into a thermal storage tank and then using absorption chillers, it's made into chilled water. The chilled water that we make it goes directly to the hospital. It also goes into underground loops out here and serves the customers in the area. Overall efficiency runs about 70%. Because we had the energy plant across the street, one BTU into the energy plant came out at about 0.75 BTUs into the hospital. If we were pulling energy from the Fayette County plant, which is about 70 miles from here, which is a coal fire plant, one BTU into that plant was about 0.29 BTUs coming into the hospital. So you can see that huge loss. The strategic placement of right-sized air handling units inside the hospital also added significant energy savings. We tried to stack the units on a floor-to-floor -floor basis, at least have them in close proximity so that when our chill water is distributed and heating water is distributed, it ends up pretty close and you don't have a lot of pipe runs and that type of thing. We designed our duct work with low velocities, low friction losses so that we maximized our energy performance as far as the distribution system was concerned. Which gave us energy savings by having smaller fan motors. Many energy efficiency improvements yield short payback periods and return on investment and offer significant savings in O&M costs, money that every hospital would prefer to direct to mission-critical priorities. The obvious way to measure results for this building would be to look at energy data, and the facilities department has kept meticulous data in terms of how to fine-tune and tweak this building over the course of its operation. Commissioning is an important part of the process because it really takes the design intent and what was built from a construction point of view and make sure that when you gain ownership of the building, that building is going to operate as you intended it to operate. For Dell, the bottom line impact has been significant. The energy difference between this facility and our other facilities is about 10 to 20 percent. That's, that's what we realize in terms of uh, the energy conservation coming off of this building, which is significant given that it's a 24-7 operation. We have one of the highest promoter score levels in our system. That has to do with whether or not patients will recommend us to a friend or a relative. Our scores there are, are very high, especially for a hospital of our size. On top of that, we've seen uh, lower staff turnover, particularly lower nursing turnover. The staff turnover issue has a positive financial benefit as well. When it comes to environmental conservation or when it comes to conservation of resources, it, it is a bucket that you are saving that all, all doesn't flow necessarily to your bottom line. But what it does is it makes the whole a lot better. Green buildings can be done on a typical building budget and achieve pretty spectacular results if you fully integrate it. And if the architect listens to the engineers and the engineers listen to the architects and we all work well together in a highly, tightly integrated way. The LEED Platinum Dell Children's Medical Center of Central Texas, an exciting example of the design and construction of an energy smart hospital. To learn more, visit buildings.energy.gov slash energy smart hospitals.